Watch this. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. While the evil days come not. Now, this was some time ago. Like uh, someone said a, a while ago, they said, ah, Bishop Nathaniel, you, you said there's not going to be a time of Jacob's trouble. If you listen closely to what I said, oh moron, I said back then, which was five years ago, we were not in Jacob's trouble at that time. Listening is an art. Listening is an art. So let's read it again. Go ahead. We, Deuteronomy 28, showed that we would have gone through slavery. Yes. We'd have gone through oppression. What is next to happen to us? Liberation through Christ? Or will there be something else, another form of slavery that we will go through, another tribulation that we'll go through before Christ establishes the kingdom? What's you understand what I'm saying? Yes, I understand. What's going to happen? Will there be, yes. What is going to happen before Christ makes Returns. his second okay. Is there going to be another persecution? There's going to be war between the nations. Yes. Okay. The European Union will crumble. Okay. okay. They will despise and fight against Babylon the Great, which is the United States of America. Okay. And it will burn America with fire. So Europe, Europe is going to go to war yes. with, with America. America. Yes. Yeah. But in terms of us black people now, will we go through another uh, kind of slavery, another... Uh, the tribulation that slavery was representative of. Do you mean Noah, Matthew 24? You know what I want? So, in Christ, other words, what will happen to us immediately before Christ returns? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna show as a you. people, as a race. As a race. Yes. You know what I want, I think? Yes. Yeah. 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 Matthew 24, come on. Yeah. As Matthew it was. Yeah. You got it for me? Yes, verse 38. Matthew 24, verse 38. So the 37. 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also coming, the, the coming of the Son of Man be. So that's going to be the outcome. We're going to be carrying along like la da like you're doing now. So everything going all right. That's we're, right. You know, war will be going carnival, on. Carnival, excitement, right. and so on. Then war will pop off. So we this as a people, come. we as a people will not go through an ethnic kind of a persecution. No, no, no. That won't happen. No. Nope. Uh, someone said a while ago, they said, ah, Bishop Nathaniel, you, you said there's not going to be a time of Jacob's trouble. If you listen closely to what I said, oh moron, I said back then, which was five years ago, we were not in Jacob's trouble at that time. Listening is an art. Listening is an art. So let's read it. How, how do you explain Daniel 12? Ah, Daniel 12 and verse 1. Yes, says, yes, yes. Daniel 12. There's a that. time to come. At that time uh -huh. shall arise Michael, the great prince who uh -huh. has charge of your people. This is talking about Hebrews. Mm -hmm. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never has been since there was that nation of Israel till that time. But at that time your people shall be delivered, everyone whose name shall be written. Yes. This prophesies uh -huh. that Israel is going to go through something, mm, a time of trouble such as never was. That means it is supposed to exceed if we are the Israel, this should exceed slavery. This should exceed any horrors that we had gone through in our history. This is supposed to happen to whoever are the true Israelite people just before the return of Christ. Mm -hmm. To the point that the archangel Michael will have to stand up for that people mm -hmm. called the true Hebrews. And you just said that what we are looking for is not a, something that will eclipse transatlantic slavery, mm -hmm. but a liberation through Christ. That's right. I'm going to explain it. But We're, this me, but the true, the true Israelites mm -hmm. Which will is experience us? another Holocaust. No, I'm going to explain it to you. Revelation explain 11, 11. Daniel 12, 12, 1. I'm going to explain it. Well, I'm going to explain it with a precept that it says the same thing. Well, come on, come that. on. Revelation 11, read quickly. If please. we are the true Israelites, then something else according to prophecy is supposed to happen to us on a scale mm -hmm. that will surpass what happened in slavery. Just watch. All come right. On, come on. The book of Revelation chapter 11 and verse 11. Yeah. And after three days and a half, 
the spirit of life from God entered into them. That's us waking up again. This is what you see here. The spirit of life That's from right, God. Two witnesses. This is, yeah, the two witnesses of the two kingdoms. Two, Come on. Yeah. And they stood upon their feet. That's what you see upon, now. Yeah. Uh -huh. and a and great fear fell upon them which, say, which saw them. Right, because Israel is going to come back together, Judah and Israel. Come on. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. This is what you call the rapture. Come up hither. Watch this. And you they ascended. Go ahead, read it again. And they ascended up, right, up to heaven in a cloud. They ascended up to heaven in a cloud, which is a chariot. Here it comes. Yeah. And their enemies beheld Our them. Our enemies going to see us. Who's the enemies? The white man. Watch this. Verse 13. But you missed it. Come on. Daniel wait, wait, 12. Come on come and on. the same hour. And the same hour. Meaning uh -huh. the same time that we're taken up. Yeah. Was there a great earthquake. Meaning destruction. And right? the tenth part of the city fell. Meaning the tenth part of the city is going to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. This is the great thing that Daniel's talking about, which shall never been since the world began no Normal this is saying israel this is saying the people of israel uh -huh. the people of israel are going to experience a time of horror and the time of persecution and the time where did you see persecution that's what it means what and there it? shall listen there shall be a time of trouble, trouble uh -huh. for that people not just read generally this, read this it, read it, man read it. there shall be a time of trouble such as has never, never has won. been since there it was, was a nation uh -huh. till that time. But at that time, your people shall be delivered. What yes. it means is the people of Israel had gone through. Uh, someone said a while ago, they said, oh, Bishop of Daniel, you, you said there's not going to be a time of Jacob's trouble. If you listen closely to what I said, oh moron, I said back then, which was five years ago, we were not in Jacob's trouble at that time. Listening is an art. Listening is enough. So let's read. They it. had gone through um, the, the destruction. They had gone through uh, captivity by the Assyrians, by the Babylon, by Babylonians, and so on. This is prophesied that in the last days they are going to go through something that would surpass that. Mr. Boyne, you don't have that. Mr. Boyne, if we are Mr. the people, Boyne. you don't have that in your prophetic Mr. Boyne, eschatology. Leave Bible interpretation to us. You don't have it. Uh, when you read Second Peter 3, it talks about the great fire that shall destroy everything. That's what this is this talking about. This is not talking about everything. Nah, no, this is talking, talking about, about something specific to the nation. Shalom. Shalom. Yasharalam. Shabbat Shalom. First and foremost, Kohalayam La. Albanawa, Yahawa, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rechachradash. Double honors to our elders and elder apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Akiam out there on the highways and the byways. Salutations to the hopeful elect. Salutations to you speckled birds, you Israelite foreigners. And a strong Shalom to the Aquaf sitting and listening in silence as the scriptures say to do so. Okay, this is your brother, Amoth Ya'ais from Yahawada. Amoth Ya'ais from Yahawada. Coming at y'all with another beautiful lesson. I uh, wanted to add my two cents on to the uh, to that uh, those lies that uh, uh, the Detective Nasty Nate is saying, man. You know, uh, <laughs> man, oh man, you call yourself a man of the Lord, but you can't admit when you made a mistake, when you went off instead of instead of, uh, you know, correcting yourself and being humble and humbling down to your how about shim, how shy, man, you add on more iniquities, man. You know, so we're going to get a few precepts, man. And uh, there's other scriptures I wanted to bring out, but uh, other brothers brought those out. So I'm just going to bring out, you know, the, uh, the other ones that I wanted to bring out. And this lesson could be <laughs> this lesson could be a whole day lesson, man. But we're just going to get straight to the point, man, you know, because we got other things to do that's more important than to keep on exposing Detective Nasty Nate, man. So let's go ahead and go to Matthews. <clears throat> let's go to Matthews chapter seven. And let's read. Uh. Let's read uh, Matthew chapter 7, verses 5 to 20. Verses 5 to 20, and it reads this. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye, ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot 
bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not so like you, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Whereby, whereby their fruits, Salakia, like whereby by their fruits ye shall know them. And that's, well, you know, uh, point blank period, man. You know, uh, the brothers is correcting uh, Nasty, Detective Nasty Nate out of love, man. You know, but uh, what, what does Detective Nasty Nate do, man? He comes back and insult brothers, belittle brothers, and all brothers do is uh, protecting the doctrine, man, uh, defending the doctrine, man. But you want to keep on going off, man. But hey, keep on going off, man. Let's see what Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah says about you false prophets, man. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 13. We're going to read verses 6 to 9. Verses 6 to 9, and it reads this. They have seen vanity and lying divination, saying Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai saith, and Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai have not sent them. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. Have ye not seen a vain vision? And have ye not spoken a lying divination? Whereas ye say, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai saith it, albeit, albeit, I have not spoken. Therefore, thus saith Yahweh power, because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies. Therefore, behold, I am against you, saith Yahweh power, and my hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine lies. Woo! They shall not be in the assembly of my people, neither, neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel, neither shall they enter into the land of Israel and ye shall know that I am Yahweh power man oh man that's like I said man those scriptures right there is fighting words man <laughs> those right there is fighting words because this man keep on lying man this man keep on lying and you, you keep on forgetting that the receipts is on, is on the internet man the receipts is on the internet man Ain't nobody uh, bearing false witness against you. Ain't nobody calling your names. Ain't nobody doing this and doing that. Ain't nobody doing what you do, man. Okay? The true, sincere Aki I'm out here putting in this work, man, is going to uh, uh, be humble. It's going to, you know, uh, abase themselves, man. They ain't going to exalt themselves. You exalt yourself, man. Okay? You don't want to be, you don't, you don't want to uh, uh, be corrected or be wrong in the midst of your congregation, man. But trust and believe, man, your congregation is seeing this, man. And they questioning you, man. Even though if they're not bringing it to the forefront, <clears throat> they're questioning you, man. So let's keep on going. Let's go to uh, Galatians. Let's, let's go to Galatians real quick. Galatians chapter 1. And let's read verses 6 to 9. All right, this is Galatians chapter 1, starting off at verse 6, ending at 9. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Hamashiach, Unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Hamashiach. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, then that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that ye have received, let him be a curse. Woo, boy, oh boy. <laughs> boy, matter of fact, we can read verse 10. For I do now persuade men or the most high or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Hamashiach, man. And it's obviously that you're not the servant of Yahweh Shai 
a Hamashiach, Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai, man. Because if he was, you'd be doing things to, to please the Heavenly Father and his Son. So let's, let's get another scripture on your lips, man. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 12. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22, and it reads this. Lip, lying lips are an abomination. Lying lips are an abomination to Yahweh. Bahashim Yahweh Shai, but they that deal truly are his delight, man. Man, oh man, you better uh, tighten up, man. You better tighten up, or Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai going to destroy you, man. Let's go to 1 Timothy. And like I said, man, this wasn't meant to be long. This is a, a, a pretty quick uh, hit. 1 Timothy chapter 3. Let's read verses 1 to 5. Verses 1 to 5, and it reads this. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desire a good work. A bishop, <clears throat> so like you, a bishop then must be blameless. The husband of one wife, vag uh, uh, vigilant, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, giving to hospitality, apt to teach, not given too much wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of the Most High, man? And you, you did all these all these points is against you, man. You're not blameless. You don't have good behavior. You know, you don't have hospitality. Did you, you you damn sure are greedy of money, man? You're not patient. And you're covetous, man. So you don't you don't fit the characteristics of being a bishop, man. You don't, man. Thus saith the scriptures, not me. Thus saith Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Let's jump back to Proverbs, man. Let's jump back to Proverbs. It's Proverbs chapter 18. And let's read verse 7. And it reads this. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 7. A fool's, a fool's mouth is his destruction and his lips are the snare of his soul. Man, oh man, that's powerful. Let's read it again, man. A fool's, Mouth is his own whew, Salakia. Proverbs 18 verse 7 A fool's mouth is his destruction And his lips are the snare of his soul Man oh man You better repent Detective Nasty Nate You better repent man Let's go, let's go to Titus real quick Paul, Paul, Paul spoke that again in Titus Let's go to Titus chapter 1 uh, Verses 7 to 11 Con all right, this is Titus chapter 1, starting off at verse 7. For a bishop must be blameless as the steward of the Most High, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given too, so like it, not given too wine, not strike, so like it, no striker, not given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men. You got good men correcting you, man. You got good men uh, rebuking you out of love and you hate good men. Titus chapter one, verse eight again. But a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate, holding fast the faithful word as he have been taught that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sakes. This script, this whole, <laughs> this whole Titus chapter one verses seven to eleven is against you, because you don't have these characteristics to be a bishop, man. Okay, everything I read is against you. Okay, but let's keep on going. Let's go to Jeremiah and then we're going to close out. Let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 23. 
let's read verses 16 to 17 is what I want. All right, this is Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 16 to 17. Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you, they make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, they say still unto them, they, they say still unto them that despise me, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, have said, ye shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. Now you told, your congregation, because we have the footage, you told your congregation that there is no Jacob's trouble. Jacob's trouble is gay. You're going to be marrying, you're going to be loved, and then as soon as all hell is going to break loose, you're going to be ascended into the uh, into the chariots, which was a damn lie. Okay, and that's why I brought this scripture out on you, because this describes you to a T. Now, let's close out here. And Lord willing, this is edifying to the hopeful elect, man. Watch out for these daggone uh, false prophets, man. All right, this is Revelation chapter 2, verse 2. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not slack you. Revelation chapter 2, verse 2. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and has found them liars. So there you have it, man. Self-explanatory, man. You wicked. You, you you ain't you ain't man, you ain't just, you ain't righteous, man. You wicked as hell. You 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 supposed to be an elder apostle because you got so many years on you, but you're not, man. You know, and, and you're a liar, man. You a damn liar, man. And the, 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 your own mouth is against you, man. Matter of fact, let's close out there, man. Let's close out there. That's the spirit, too. Let's close out there. Let's go to Job. Let's close out there. Job chapter is it 14 to 15. I think it's 15. Con. Job chapter 15, verse 6. Thine own mouth condemneth thee, and not I. Yea, thine own lips testify against thee. So, man, you better get it together, uh, Detective uh, Detective Nasty Nate. You better get it together, man, because the Most High ain't playing with you, man. The Most High is not playing with y'all uh, so-called uh, 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 prophets, man, that's out here uh, uh, not teaching the correct doctrine, man. You know, uh, so with that said, man, Lord willing, this is edifying. I pray that this is edifying to the hopeful elect. So with that, I'm just going to say Shabbat Shalom. Man, give me a fruit cocktail. Do you know who you're dealing with? Chill, Nasty Nate. It's my bitch. Anybody gonna stab him, it's gonna be me. You got a problem with that? Better watch your back, fish. The school master ain't gonna be there for you all the time. Because next time I come for you, I'm gonna want some cocktail. Fruit.